The ideal gas law is a law that describes the ideal gas. It is not a gas law that is ideal. So let's describe what an ideal gas is. An ideal gas follows these six characteristics. Ideal gases have very small particles. Ideal gases have large distances between them, meaning that the volume of the particles are negligible. Ideal gases are in constant random linear motion. Ideal gases conserve kinetic energy when there are collisions. The average kinetic energy of an ideal gas is temperature dependent. And the gas particles do not attract nor repel each other. This might look familiar to you because an ideal gas follows kinetic molecular theory. The kinetic molecular theory describes the behavior of an ideal gas. Now we've talked about a series of gas laws already. We started out with Boyle's law. And then we did Charles' law. And then we combined Boyle and Charles to come up with the combined gas law. After the combined gas law, we went and talked about Avogadro, and we looked at Avogadro's law. The ideal gas law is a mixture of all of them. You can take Boyle's law, where pressure and volume are inversely proportional. You can take Charles' law, where volume and temperature are directly proportional. And you can take Avogadro's law, where volume and amount are directly proportional. And cram all three of those laws together, and you get a statement like this or pressure times volume over amount times temperature will be constant. And what's neat about this is that you don't have to keep any of the four measurements constant. In those previous three laws you could test two and keep two constant, but because all of the measurements are in this equation there's no need to keep any one or two measurements constant. And because you don't have to keep any one or two of the measurements constant, that value for k is known we give that value of k its own letter. It's a capital R, and R is referred to as the ideal gas constant. Sometimes it's called the universal gas constant. If you look up on Wikipedia or in your text, you'll see several values of R depending on what units you use. In this class, we're going to be using this value for R. R is 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres divided by moles times Kelvin. All right, so there's a lot here, so let's kind of simplify things. We have this statement, PB over NT equals a constant R. The ideal gas law is normally written like this, PV equals NRT, and R is 0 0.08206, and the units of R are liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. So let's put it to use. I've got 15 grams of chlorine gas, I know the temperature to be 55 degrees Celsius, and I know the volume is 12.8 liters. Using the ideal gas law and the ideal gas constant, let's figure out the pressure of this gas. Now in Avogadro's law, we needed our amounts to be in moles, so 15 grams was no good. In Charles' law and in the combined gas law, we needed our temperatures to be in Kelvin. So that's going to be true in the ideal gas law. We want our amounts always to be in moles, and we want our temperatures to be in Kelvin. We know that because if we look at the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, the R value of 0 0.08206 is in liters times atmospheres all over moles times Kelvin. So if you're going to use this value for R, you need to use liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. So let's start by making sure we're in the correct units. Let's take 15 grams of chlorine. 15 grams, and chlorine remembers a diatomic, so chlorine is Cl2, which means the molar mass of chlorine is 71 grams for every mole. So 15 grams of chlorine is 0 0.211 moles of chlorine. Then our temperature of 55 degrees Celsius, convert that to Kelvin, and you get 328 Kelvin. So now that we're in the correct units, we can use the ideal gas law. So PV equals NRT, we are looking to solve for pressure. So if I take PV equals NRT, 
I can isolate pressure by dividing both sides by volume. So I get a statement that says pressure equals nRT all over V. So N, the number of moles, we found to be 0.211 moles. R is our ideal gas constant, 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres, moles times Kelvin. Temperature, 328 Kelvin. And then our volume is given to us as 12.8 liters. So let's check our work. I've got moles canceling out here. I've got liters canceling out here. I've got Kelvin canceling out here, which leaves me with atmospheres, which makes sense because I'm solving for pressure. So when this is all said and done, I get 0 0.444 atmospheres.